Ladies and gentlemen, the play's the thing, with your host, Judy Sleed. Special guest, Stuart F. Lane, author and Tony Award winning producer. Now here's Judy, Judy, Judy. Oh, that was lovely, Lee. Thank you so much. And I'm so happy to have Stuart here as my guest. Hi, Stuart. Hi, how are you? Good. You came out in this hot weather just to sit here in a hot studio. <laughs> so, it's so wonderful. So first, how are you doing? Oh, things are well. It's been a, been a very nice summer. It has, it has. So first, what I would like to know is, where were you born? Well, I was born right here in New York, Brooklyn Jewish Hospital. In Brooklyn? Oh, that's, I love that place, Brooklyn. Yes, and you went to school there? No, no, we, we moved uh, right away to Rockville Center. And my I was... neighbor, you were my neighbor. I lived in Baldwin for oh, many exactly. years. Oh, exactly, exactly, <laughs> right next door. And then yes. when I was eight, we moved to uh, Kings Point, New York, and I grew up there. Wow, so you moved a lot even before you went to school. You must have gotten very tired. <laughs> no, but I developed a love of traveling. <laughs> oh, I see. So you went to school in Rockville? Uh, Great Neck, uh, North Senior High. Oh, it's so a Great Neck. That's great. And I always ask people, how did you happen to come to the Hamptons? Oh, you know, I've uh, growing up in the area. I've always I always avoided the Hamptons for years. I was busy working in the summer, and I had lots of ideas and things I was working on. But uh, a different kind of philosophy began to take hold when I had uh, I've got five children, and uh, two are out of the house now. But the last three, my wife really didn't want to send them off to summer camp. She said, "You know, I only have them for 18 years, so I really oh. want to keep them home during the summer whenever I can. Because then, who knows?" So the Hamptons became an ideal place where uh, more often than not I can plant myself out here for one or two months at a time, uh, do my work in the technolo technological age we live in, between the internet and the fax machines and the cell phones. <laughs> I can yes. do all my work out here. And so uh, we've been able to spend nine summers now with the kids going to day camp and me doing some work. That is, that is good thinking, good thinking, especially when you said you only have them for 18 years. I mean, every mother should know that, to realize that, yeah. to appreciate those 18 years. It goes yes. quickly. I remember when my daughter was like 18 and she went away to college. I remember that like it was yesterday. I cried because <laughs> I know that's the end. I, I probably won't see her anymore like on a daily basis. Yes. yes. It changes. It changes. Yes. So what kind of a work do you do? Well, I'm in the theater business. I write, direct, and perform, uh, and own a theater here in New York. What else can you do? Write, direct, perform, and own a theater? Well, that's the ultimate. And write. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, write. Write. So, uh, is there anything that you're doing presently? Well, I'm going to be at the East Hampton Library, a fundraiser, a Saturday night. Uh, we're going to be, I've got a book that I've written. It's called Let's Put on a Show, How to Produce Ooh, for the Theater. That's and, great. Oh, it's, it's a terrific primer. I've gotten wonderful reviews on it. And it's a very practical guide and a very entertaining guide because I tell little anecdotes about what's really happened to me uh, on Broadway over the last 30 years or so while I explain how to put a show together. That's great. I was always looking for books like that. <laughs> there were very few, if any, out there written by professionals in the theater. That Because you had written from experience. Exactly. Yes, so it, anybody could do it, who, anybody who knows how to write. If you read, they read your book, they would know what to do, how That's to make right. it happen. Well, okay, what's a, what did you say the name of the book it's is? It's called Let's Put on a Show. Let's Put on a Show. Right, That's it's available great. at Amazon.com and, of course, yeah. at the East Hampton Library. I'll be there signing books uh, tomorrow. Right, I'll be there, too. Excellent. I'll be there, too, yes, with all the others. So uh, you write books. Did, did you also write a play? I've written two plays, uh, both published. Uh, one's called In the Wings, and the other is called If It Was Easy. They both look like, sound like light. <clears throat> are they like comedies? Yes, exactly. Those are two comedies. 
I love comedies, mm -hmm. yes. And prior to that, <coughs> excuse me, you had directed and produced? Yes, I've, I've directed uh, regional theaters throughout the country. I've been down to uh, Baltimore, Maryland at the Olney Theater. I've been up to Nantucket, uh, the Vineyard Theater in Martha's Vineyard, uh, the Lyric Stage Company of Boston, I've directed there. So you're uh, still traveling a lot? Uh, it's a bit. It was easier when the kids were <coughs> younger. I could put them in a bucket and carry them off. <laughs> the bucket, so yes. So now it's, uh, it's more and more here. I, I say mostly in town. I'm, I'm producing, uh, this year we're producing uh, Come Fly Away, the Sinatra musical, choreographed by Twyla Tharp. And uh, I'll be producing the, uh, the public theater's production of The Merchant of Venice with Al Pacino. We're going to move wow. it to Broadway in the fall. It's a busy season coming up. Uh, and, I'm, and then from London, I'm going to be producing a musical called Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Well, you know, a lot of plays come to Broadway from London. Yes, and it seems like we need some really good plays on Broadway because uh, there are a lot of revivals now. So uh, what, it, what does it take to uh, produce a play on Broadway? In a nutshell, I know. <laughs> well, we have, we have an old expression in the, in the business. It's how do you make a small fortune in the theater? You start with a large one. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. No, I, I often I say producing a show is like being the CEO of a company. I mean, you're where the buck stops. You're the one in charge of, of payroll, of hiring everybody and firing everybody. You, know, you might be the nicest guy in the world, most artistic fellow in the world, uh, but if you don't have that check doesn't clear at the end of the week, you're not going to have any friends. So it's all about money. Well, it's financing it. It's putting the team together. They're advert, you know, the composer, the lyricist, the writers, the, the advertising agency, the press <coughs> agency. Uh, the whole marketing world has changed in our business with the advent of the Internet. So is there any secret to knowing what's going to be a success? When I was younger, I knew everything. Now, I know nothing. I can't, I, <laughs> I've learned that it's a very, you know, it's, it's, you, you do what you feel believe in. You always do the shows that you feel in your gut will work. Don't try to pander to the public. Don't try and second guess the critics. You do what you're going to be yeah. most proud of. And did it always work? Well, the hits have been big and the flops small. And that's how you survive. Oh. Well, yeah, I, I also feel that I have a feeling that what will be a success but I just think what the public would like. But nowadays, you have to have a big pocketbook in order to see a show on Broadway. How big? Well, the tickets are like $100, $60, $100 a ticket. So if you want to go with the whole family, and then you want to go out to dinner, it, uh, it's... Uh... It's no question. The theater is a special experience. It's, uh, it's difficult to get to, expensive to go to. Uh, you know, between the, uh, the, the, the babysitter and the parking and the traveling time. But, but going to the theater is a, is a very magical experience. And that's what makes it so special. You take the time out of your life to travel from your home to the city to a place. It's not like a movie or television that will come to your neighborhood and cander to you. This is an occasion. And we try to make that occasion a real experience that years from now you'll go, remember when I saw West Side Story at the Palace Theater or I saw Priscilla, Queen of the Desert? That was a wonderful <coughs> yes. night. And that's the experience you take home with you, not just a movie or So where a is show. your theater, the Palace? Uh, it's 47th Street and Broadway, <coughs> the famous Palace <coughs> Theater. Uh, it was the Valhalla of Vaudeville. It's where you, you played the Palace when you, you'd made it when you played the Palace. Oh, that, oh, yes, yes, it is. So when did you acquire that? Uh, over 30 years ago. I've been partners with the Niederlander family uh, for that long. So you had foresight. You have a lot of foresight. You know, I had a love of the theater and got lucky, I think. So I'm always wondering whether all these uh, theaters, like regional theaters, took away from Broadway. Uh, no, in fact, we enhance each other. We've actually had a nice symbiotic relationship uh, with regional and nonprofit theaters because it allows, it allows us to take chances with, uh, with musicals that, uh, without having to put up too much money to uh, brisk each time. And the regional theaters get to have more sophisticated productions that they could uh, increase their subscription base. So you'd both, because we're all trying to achieve the same thing in terms of quality and, uh, and high performance. Because I just think that, you know, because there are a lot of theaters out here, and I know there's a lot of theaters upstate New York and elsewhere. I'm talking about theaters that are close to New York. And if we could go and see a play like for $20, $30, why should we go to Broadway and see, <laughs> uh, 
and spend like uh, three times as much. Well, the quality of the talent pool in New York is unsurpassed throughout the country. I mean, you want singing, you want acting, you come to New York for it. Uh, in fact, even Hollywood has been rediscovering New York. We've got more studios being built now, so there's no, it's more like Hollywood on the Hudson. Uh, no more uh -huh. bi-coastal. You can come to New York and be film, television, and stage. Right. Well, you're the right person to talk about uh, Broadway, no questions asked, <laughs> because you have all the right answers. It is, it is good to have you on, on Broadway, talk about Broadway. Do you have like a, a favorite? What do you like to produce mostly? Or would it be a drama, musical, or comedy, or? Well, my, my training was, was basically classical theater. I was an acting uh -huh. major from Boston University, College of Fine Arts, class of, <clears throat> well, well, we'll pass on that. <laughs> uh, and I came to New York as an actor, and I was able to get work. I joined the unions. I got to tour with Van Johnson. I got to work with Ed Hurley, if you remember him, the voice of Kraft. Uh, I did summer stock. I did modeling. I did any sort of business that would get me, get me out there. Uh, and it uh, gave me a good foundation in the business, because you end up you know, working the sets, working the lights, doing all aspects, publicity. And uh, I found myself out in Los Angeles in 1977. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, once you've made the rounds, what do you do next? Well, I wrote my first play. I put myself in the play, put my girlfriend in the play, and inadvertently, it became the first show I ever produced. Because I had to learn how to rent a theater, get press, get advertising, do an ad campaign, and, uh, and get the word out there and sell tickets. And uh, it, was, it was like a very rewarding experience and amazing. One of the amazing things was how, how generous people were with their time. Now, this was a volunteered kind of thing. But they were to, and to do unglamorous things like work the box office or paint the sets. But they, they felt that this was something uh, outside of what they were doing with their lives. And it's theater. Theater is a magical thing. It is. I find it magical. I love the theater inside out, outside in. And with regional theaters, I, I did that. I, I did a lot of background things because I like to see how it works. When I was uh, graduating from college, the regional theater was the holy grail. I mean, that's where you went to train and develop before coming into town. Yes. So uh, what was the name of that first that you were just talking about, that you, you were everything in it? Oh, the first You play. got all the billings. That, that was the, well, that was called In the Wings. Oh, and, that was In the Wings. And, and what was yeah. fascinating is I wrote that when I was about 27. And then uh -huh. when I went back to playwriting 25 years later, I'm here I am 50 years old, and I'm revisiting these characters that I had created. And it was so interesting because now I was approaching it from the, old, from the parents' point of view oh, in the play anyway. rather than from the, the, the young boy's point of view. So it added a lot more depth to the characters. And we actually, it was done off-Broadway at the Promenade Theater with Peter Scaleri. So you, you're saying you rewrote this a little bit? Yes. Oh, I see. Never but, throw anything out. Right. You know, I believe that a lot of plays no matter when you do it, you could do it 20, 20 years before, you could do it 20 years after. With little or no changes, it's still, you know, it's still good. Mm -hmm. So that means it's a solid play that you could always, you could take it out 20 years from now and still do it. Yeah, the play stayed the same. I was the one who I changed. I know, I know. Well, that's what I mean. It's, it's a good story. Yeah. Once you have it, if, if it doesn't get... It doesn't get dated. A good story doesn't get dated. You can always uh, put it on, and True. people will love it. Yes. There's a, some plays are like that. So, uh, and what other uh, actress do you seek? When you write a play, do you have a certain actor in mind, what you go, who you want in there? You know, I just, I just wrote a musical. <laughs> And, uh, and in fact, I, I did have some, sort of an actor in mind, but even as I kept writing and the character changed, the actor I saw playing it changed. I, <laughs> I was able they to- they get older. <laughs> uh, I've, I've won four Tony Awards, and one of the shows oh. I produced was The Will Rogers Follies. I had, the, oh. I had a great time working with Keith Carradine, one of the Carradine family, yes, one yes. of the brothers there, and uh, he was fabulous as Will Rogers. And uh, I was writing a musical based on the music of John Denver. So I wrote a whole new story using his music and lyrics. And the character of the father, I was thinking of a Keith Carradine type, but as I started working with it, the character took on a life of its own and started to change. Oh, so the, the pen took a character. You, the pen kept, you know, the, I can understand that. Somehow it feels like, you know, somebody's guiding your hand to write. 
as yes, you arrive. Absolutely. Yes, yes, I noticed that. You know, that. you struggle, you struggle, then you hit this patch which comes pouring out of you. Yes. And I'm laughing. I, one of the plays I was writing, uh, In the Wings, I mean, uh, if it was easy, I'm writing this one passage and I'm just laughing. I said, this is great. Uh, it must be coming from some other divine possibility. <laughs> this can't be coming just from me, so. That is amazing, because uh, I feel the same way. Yeah. Yes, so uh, you have five children, you said. Yes, a nice wide age range, too. I can breathe. Oh, oh I see. Anybody's taken in your footsteps? Uh, well, my oldest one did some internships here at the Public Theater and the Vineyard Theater here in town. Uh, but she's actually going back to Columbia University for children's education in the fall. And uh, I have a 19-year-old, that's Eliana. Then Harlan uh, is doing, starting her sophomore year at Skidmore. But she's more into the Japanese culture and Japanese language and manga, Japanese manga. How did that happen? Uh, she just fell in love with the, uh, like the comics and the cartoons. And that kind oh. of opened up a gateway to a whole different culture for her. Do you like Japan? Did, were you ever in Japan? Uh, I've been to Japan. It's a beautiful when country. You when you travel, you take your family with you? Well, when I traveled there, nobody was born yet. <laughs> I, was still, <laughs> I was still just married. Um, but I do travel with them whenever I can. I mean, so the range goes from, I have a 12-year-old, she's uh, going to seventh grade, Leah. She's an equestrian. She rides out here in all the, all the horse shows, the Sagaponic and the Hampton Horse Show. And oh she's been terrific. Gosh. She works hard at it. And she's really good. And she really enjoys it. So I, 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 she delivers the goods. I said, you know, if you're not going to stick with this, but she did. And she's really good. And then I have two twin boys that just turned four tomorrow. Oh, is that, that must be adorable. Well, you, it's a big range, really. Yeah. yeah. Well, you have to do something between the matinee and evening performances, right? Yeah. <laughs> Can you say that on TV? Yeah. yeah, it is. So, and what does your wife do? Uh, she actually uh, works with me in producing and and. Uh, she's helping and you. Yes. Yes. And does she write plays also? Uh, she's more into movies and films, so she's helping me produce in that area. Uh, we've done several shows now for great performances on PBS. In fact, we are, we are producing uh, the Stephen Sondheim I birthday that. celebration that was done at the new, with the New York Philharmonic. Music. It'll be on yeah. November on great performances. We did uh, uh, we did Cyrano de Bergerac. We did we produced it on Broadway and then did it for great performances. The one that starred Kevin Klein and Jennifer Gardner. Oh, so we've been that's... expanding into film and television as well as stage. It's amazing what one person can do. I mean, you started this when you were just a kid, and you put your whole self in it, and just look at that. Well, yeah. You're a good example of how to make it in life. Yes, well, my, my parents in, wept until they died. He, my, our son's in the theater. Oh, oh my yeah, gosh. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I, <laughs> I, I, yes. Anything. A doctor, like anything. Yes. Teaching's nice. You know. Yeah. It is amazing how years ago that, uh, you know, we, not we, but our parents, you know, they didn't think that you could succeed in the theater. No, yeah. And they fought against it. I said, be a doctor. Yeah, my son, the doctor. <laughs> they, they wanted to tell it to the coffee clutch. That's oh, right. my son, the doctor. <laughs> so she, your wife, she writes... Uh, well, she helps, helps produce uh, the uh, film and, the and film? television. Oh, she produces. And, and she writes, too. She writes articles for the, you know, the, some of the trade papers. Oh. So you're always busy. Got to do it now while I can. I remember when the phone didn't ring, so I... Oh, you I'm remember really the phone yes. didn't ring. Yeah, so I, I, I take advantage yeah. of it. So um, during the winter, you're in the city? Yes, yes. We live on the Upper East Side. I have a nice apartment there. The kids go to Horace Mann. Do you uh, like living in the city? Oh, I love living in the city. Oh I've always, gosh. as soon as I, I mean, growing up in the suburbs in Great Neck was, you know, good education, good school system. But as soon as I could, I really, I loved living in New York City. How do you commute? How do I commute to the office <laughs> from, <laughs> from 76th Street? <laughs> well, I can, I have a, I take a taxi. Oh my gosh, it is so busy there. It is so busy. You can't, some, I go into the city just every once in a while, and I don't have even space to walk. There's so many people, and I love to walk in the city. But people, that means that there's commerce going on. And when you hear different languages, <laughs> it means there's, there's tourism going on. And this is, yeah. this is dynamic. You know, the is, world has gotten so small now that, you know, to fly to Japan, or even to, I can do business in Japan by just on the telephone. The, the audiovisual 
promise of the uh, World's Fair in 1964 has come true finally. I can talk to my daughter at school and see her on the computer. It's great. And you learned how to do all that? Well, you have to. You've got to keep up. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you get left behind. <laughs> Is it easy for you to learn those things? Uh, the, initially, I had to actually go to my daughter's school, uh, my older one, and she was like in you know, sixth grade, and actually sit down at a desk and you know, learn how to download uh, something. But, but yes. now it's, it's, it's gotten a lot you know, easier, a lot you know, user friendly. Well, this is amazing because a lot of people, when they get you know, older, they just can't understand what goes on with all the technology. Uh, it's always going to keep changing. It's just going to keep, but it'll get you more user friendly as you go along. You know, voice activated, it'll be, you know, it'll be easier to use. Yes. So, what do you? Uh, what's your favorite communication? Telephone, in person, texting. <laughs> I find the cell Telegram. phone still the most amazing thing. <laughs> it's a mar it's, You know, I, I mean, it, it, there was a, there was a TV series called Quantum Leap on for a while back. I love you that. Remember? And the, oh. one of the characters had a device in his hand, which basically Ziggy. did everything. Ziggy. Yeah, Ziggy. Ziggy. Right. He'd be tapping into it, and <laughs> yeah. that's basically my cell phone. I can do the, the weather, <coughs> email. I can call somebody. I, I'm, I'm lost. I need the directions. Yeah. I, it's like all right there. This I find amazing. This is this is productive time. This is great. They didn't even know that uh, Ziggy existed then when they did that's that. That's right. Oh, that was a great show. That funny you should mention that Scott Bakula. Yes, good actor, nice and, fellow. And Dean Stockwell. Yes, I'm watching some early movies when Dean Stockwell was a kid. Yeah. Yes. So, do you take any? Uh, any ideas from like old movies and, and trying to bring it uh, into today? Because a lot of, you know, all the stories are really like the same, but it, it's, it's a. Well, when you I wrote go the play, away from, you could just make it a little different and it's still the same story. Well, in terms of storyline, no, I haven't taken old storylines. Uh, in the case of. Uh, if it was easy, which I wrote with Ward Morehouse, uh, we I, we went for a style of like the His Girl Friday. Remember the Cary Grant, yes, uh, uh, yes. Rosalind Russell movie. Yes. So yes. I was trying to go for this, you know, quick bantering back and forth between a man and a woman kind of uh, yes. smart talk. Uh, so it was a style we were going for. But it was a whole different story. Uh, this this book I wrote for the John Denver musical, A Moment in Time, totally original story uh, about yeah. a, 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 an Afghan a marine in Afghanistan who, uh, after being shot and hospitalized, has these visions of a happier time of camping with his father and meeting his, his girlfriend uh, in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. Right. Uh, the, these thoughts come to me because recently I started watching Hungarian movies that I have on DVDs. And I purchased these like a year ago. And I, I, my DVD uh, was broken and I forgot all about it. So now I have a DVD, so I just remembered. Let me watch them. And uh, some of the, uh, you know, I'm Hungarian, so some of the things that happening there, it must have made an impression on me because I use those things in my stories. <laughs> well, hunger, I actually have been to Hungary once. It was in Budapest. Yes. Buda and Pest. Yes. Uh, the most beautiful women are in Hungary. Gorgeous women. That's yeah, I was evidence born. here. <laughs> I was born there, <laughs> yes. And uh, in the 30s, <coughs> um, a close relative was a very famous actress in Budapest. And those, I purchased all her movies and I'm watching them now. Oh, fascinating. <laughs> yes, and I was just keep chuckling because I said, gee, I, that phrase, I brought it into my play in English <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> so it, it is a lot of fun to be with all these creative people. And the more you work with them, the more inspired you get, wouldn't but you say? One of the joys of working in the business, whether it's producing, writing, or directing, is the amazing quality of talent I get to work with. You know, the, the singers, the performers, the, the uh, true artists, you know, and that, that is really exciting. Did you ever write any songs? No, not yet. No, not that still a yet. Yeah, that, that's great. When you have a yet, you have something to look forward to. That's okay, right. I'm going to write a song. I'm going to put it in my play. Mm -hmm. When you write a musical, you have to put your own songs in it. So uh, you said you're working on a, on a production right now. Well, we've got, and yes. And where yes. are you going to put it first? Uh, well, we've got uh, 
we're doing uh, two, three shows. We're, we're moving the uh, Merchant of Venice, starring Al Pacino. We'll be coming yeah. to Broadway, uh, mm -hmm. the J Bernie Jacobs Theater, uh, in the fall. We're going to be doing another show that the Public Theater did last season called Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson, kind of a rock musical based on the uh, Andrew Jackson, the President Andrew Jackson. Yes, he was. There were many stories written about him. Well, he was a populist president. And because we have a populist president now, we thought there was a nice relevancy uh, to the story. So it's uh -huh. a kind of a terrific cast, handsome young lead playing, uh, playing Jackson, and uh -huh. a good rock score. So we're moving that to Broadway as well. So you're into rock music. That's, that's great. Well, we're expanding. You know, there's room for yeah. everything on Broadway. In fact, there's been an amazing change in, in Broadway where it's become a lot less elitist and more popular. Uh, so we have something on Broadway for everyone. If you want to see Lion King with the kids, you can do that. You want to see Frank Sinatra? Come see Fly Away. You're, uh, you want to see Legally Blonde or West Side Story and see what teenagers are like? You know, American Idiot, a rock musical that's up there now. No, it's a much, it's much more wide range, a much you know, wider swath that's cut now mm -hmm. on Broadway, too. And you said you about Guildhall, which is right around the corner, mm -hmm. which is a, the theater out Beautiful here, little theater. Is that great? It's really yes. charming. And you, you were there as an actor? Uh, no, no, they did a reading of my play last year. Oh, a reading of they the did a play. Reading of play there. And are, are you going to give them some stuff? And there's also a, a regional theater in Woodstock, which I was there just recently. They have a great theater over there, too. Well, when I, the, this show I, uh, I, I directed and I wrote, The Moment in Time, the John Denver musical, we did that at the Dix Hills Performing Arts Center uh, mm -hmm. in conjunction with Five Towns College. And that was an amazing experience because I got to work with terrific, it's a great facility. The equipment is first rate. And the quality of the personnel and staff there helped me put together a real professional show because I could use professional actors from New York City, bring them out all the, act the Broadway actors out here, uh, and, and do it for a fraction of the cost of what it would do to do a show over in town. So this was a great yes, experience. It's a good place to try out your craft exactly. here in the Hamptons and, and in the Woodstock also. Well, the half hour is just about gone. I could be talk for another hour, but we have to, then we have to go to my living room. Because <laughs> <laughs> over here. Okay, <laughs> let's time. go. Yeah. I'll go. Well, thank you again, Stuart, for occupying the hot seat. <laughs> well, thanks for having me here. This is charming. Very nice. Yes, it is great. So um, now we could talk about other things. If you, I would love for you to read that script without promising me that you're going to do it. I mean, what I would like is. What's the name of it? It's called Georgie Day. Let me let me see, let me see it. Sure. And I written I've written the music for it also, but it's just first draft. I never changed anything because I feel if anybody's interested, this is it. Then you could expand on it. It's a very it's funny, romantic, and patriotic with beautiful songs. Like melodious it. song. Of course, like other musicians could expand on the songs because they just, you know, and if you wanted to, yeah, especially when somebody wanted a big musical number, so, uh, but as I said, it's, it's workable. Georgie Day, okay, yes, let me see it. Right. Wouldn't that be wonderful, or, or not only wonderful, but interesting if you would like it.